Okay, today I'm working on putting light bar on this 2006 Jeep Commander. Pretty sure the Commanders are all the same, 2006 to 2010. So if you're watching this and you're looking to do the same, pretty much what I'm doing is gonna be compatible against all years or makes models. I already had some of these spot type lights here and I was using a fairly popular, let me see, I got one here, this mount. And this just mounts to the hood hinge and just sort of sets the light up. And you know, this sits right about here. And um, worked pretty good. They're great for, for trails, right? Lighting up sides of the roads and give me a little, you know, wider beam pattern compared to what you would get with the stock headlights. And, and that was good, but now it's starting to be winter, starting to get a little bit of snow, a little more fog, depending on morning or evening. So. I ended up picking up a Chinese light bar. It does both the white and the yellow light, so that should be pretty helpful. And um, I got some of these brackets from a vendor. I'm, I'm not gonna name. They sort, of, they sort of mount here, and they will have provision for both the, the light bar up top, and then this mount will go back down here. I worked with this manufacturer a little bit about this piece right here. Um, this was oriented wrong. It just had basically one spot that would not allow a common light bar from China to fit on that mount there. So what I had to do was, actually I'll just show you, um, this piece here was was rotated. So instead of being you know sideways like this, it, it was more turned like that. And I talked to um, the manufacturer, suggested this, loaded it up in CAD and, and offered to send them the flat patterns to change, which he didn't need. I mean, he's making these, so he obviously knew uh, what he was doing. He suggested just use one screw, it will be fine. I didn't want to do that, I didn't like the idea of that. So I went ahead and cut that center piece out, rotated it to fit my light bar, welded it back in, and then, and then sprayed some of this wrinkle black on there, and I think it looks pretty good. So today I'm going to, what I think, to take this trim off here i'm going to try and save it if i could because it does use uh the weather strip um, let's just take a look in here if we pull this down this uh come on door seal start down here make it easy for ourselves all right you'll see this door seal it actually snaps into this piece right here just screwed on and if we take off this entire piece, we're gonna lose this snap for, um, for a door seal. So might need to cut it, uh, maybe just slice it off if the, if the bracket is hitting up against here, or uh, maybe we can keep it and the bracket will just sit a little proud. We'll have to, we'll have to just kind of see. I'm not against cutting this thing somewhere in here so that we maintain this lip for the, for the seal and you know we'll just slice it slice it through here and um, mount the bracket over that. I've already put some relays in here. So the wiring's a little bit of a mess right now, but um, from before the wiring came down, some loom over here. And then what I did is I just got some of these Chinese Relays, standard automotive relay off of Amazon. Go on there and search, you could find them. I might've got them in like a five or a six pack, but they're out there, so. Standard relay doesn't, doesn't need much for these LEDs. And the way I'm doing it is, I have one relay here, and this is for the, the floodlights, the sort of spotlights that I'm gonna put at the bottom. And I had to run with two relays because I'm using a, a toggle switch, uh, which I'll show you. And that's gonna allow me to flip the switch up for the white light and flip the switch down for the yellow light. Now they do make controllers that you could buy for these and it will allow you to control it all through that little controller and then do some strobing and some sort of things like that. But that wasn't really the route that I wanted to take. So came up with a little schematic to allow me to flip the switch up or down, toggle these two relays and it will either be white or yellow switch that I'm using is this here. I 3D printed it based off the existing cubby. 
So this is gonna be for the spotlights, which, well, you can see those, those actually still turn on. Um, and then this is gonna be for the light bar and then up for white and then down for, for yellow and then the center's off. And then I left myself a spare spot here. And then I think that's gonna allow me to put some, some of these spot style lights in the back of the Jeep just to help with the reversing and, and seeing a little more behind me on the trails. So I'll probably set this camera up and um, get to work. Got to decide if I need to cut these or if they will reach on the new brackets um, and then run some signal wires. So the way I'm running the signal wire for the spot is I'm just coming through the loom, coming around and then I don't know if you could see right about there, um, there's already a grommet there. So I just poked a hole in it and ran the single wire through so far for the first spotlights. And now when I run the light bar, I'll probably have to run two more to toggle each relay here, um, depending on if I want the white or the yellow light. And if this is something you guys are interested, I'll put the schematic up on an overlay at some point. So yeah, I'll share so you can see what I did. I think it's a, I think it's a pretty simple simple circuit but um you know it did take some thinking to figure out how to get both on on these switches that i want so i'll uh, i'll overlay that and you guys could can copy that if, if you find yourself trying to trying to do something similar um i still have this other light just kind of lying here i don't know if this one will reach but um yeah i'll see when i get to that point so first thing is going to be getting the brackets mounted up and making sure they fit the width of the light bar that I'm using. I'm not gonna link these lights or the light bar. They're just Chinese Amazon ones and um, just search for it. You'll, you'll find something that you like at the right price. So I'll set this thing up and get to work and see how, see how everything mounts up. Okay, so I got the brackets sort of put into position. I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do here. It looks like I could leave this seal, which I really want to do. I think it's gonna help with some wind noise and some some weather but guessing this is going to cause plenty of whistling so not really a major major uh, concern about noise but if i can keep some of the wind noise down might as well be better so the reason i test fit before just going ahead and drilling we have an issue here with the wiper so i had to set this with enough gap so that this would clear um, and I also want to make sure this is going to be level. So what I'm doing right now is I have this just sort of pinched in the gasket. And if I pull this off, you'll see the way it was sort of designed. A bunch of holes in here. Some of them I drilled. I think these three may have been existing, but you can kind of see where this wants to, sorry, where this wants to attach up here. Unfortunately, there's no metal behind this. The, the actual, um, the hood, the frame and whatnot, all of that sort of stops shy of, I don't know if you can see where there's a ridge here in this plastic, it's sort of flat and then right there it ridges up. Beyond the ridge, that's where, that's where the body, um, let me zoom out here, the body kind of rolls over towards, towards the windshield and so after you get to here, there's no more metal. So. If I was to mount this underneath this, or if I cut it off, there still would not be any metal to, to rivet it to. So what I think I'm gonna try first is I'm going to put all this in place, sort of able to squeeze it with this seal to hold it, and it, it moves fairly easily. And then once I just click the door, you can kind of see there how it, how it kind of just holds it in place just enough that I can go and sort of see how it's gonna look from side to side. And got about the same gap here and about the same right here. So my first thing is going to be, I'm gonna pull the seal off on both sides, sort of the same thing here. See there's less holes on this side. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna drill into just the seal here and I'm gonna try and put a plastic rivet through the bracket into the seal, and then the seal's held in with these factory screws here. So I may add more depending on how this feels. I don't think it's gonna be an issue because 
once that's attached and you do close the door that there pinches it and now this is this is really tight it's not moving it's not sliding so i think having the the rivets in there just to hold it to the seal and keep it in place that should do as far as you know any movement when the doors open and people coming in and out or whatever but with regards to driving around and any issues uh going on trails or just going down the road highway speeds anything of the sort i don't think it's going to be an issue once the doors close this is held in awfully tight another thing i've noticed now that it's mounted is if you could see the angle of these are not good um they're sort of they're sort of tilted down this way almost almost like they're pointed towards let me see if i can come around it's pointed way down and not only is it pointed down it's pointed towards the center um, that's common on both sides so it's not just one or the other like one was made wrong i mean that's that's pointed way down so i don't know if i want to try and bend this up a little bit to sort of level it out because of the way this is welded there's no way to move this here it, it would have to tilt up so it's not really going to bend the way i want i'm hoping I don't know if I'm going to use this light. I have other lights. If I get this thing, I might be able to rotate it up, but it, it's probably, even if I could pivot it up to, to account for that, it's still probably going to be tilted this way. So not quite sure what that's going to look like. It's, it's going to be not good. Maybe once it's mounted, I could sort of tweak this thing back up to level. I'll just have to see um, what I can do there. But... For now, I think this is about what it's going to look like. Going to put a level on it and, and make sure each side is the same roughly here and at the top, which I've already measured it. They seem to be about the same, but I'll level it out with the Jeep and um, make sure that's square. And then I'll put one or two rivets in. Just going to use plastic rivets, check it, see how it fits. And then if that works out, I will add the rest of the rivets and, and show you what it looks like. Okay, so I started to get the bar mounted and uh this thing here you can kind of see how that's going to work afterwards but I'll show you what i did so i was using plastic rivets as i was saying um, they will touch the body a little bit but instead of metal i don't think that's actually necessary here um, i'm just using plastics I haven't done this bottom one here i might actually move it up i might re-drill it somewhere around here um, but you can see the plastic rivets I think are going to hold fine. And if this one is touching the body behind it, then with any bit of vibration, um, if the inside of that rivet is rubbing the, the paint there, not going to be as bad as a metal rivet to really uh, tear up the paint or the body. So I got two of the factory screws in just to hold this trim in place. I haven't mounted these two yet down here. Um, just want to get them in, see how they do. They hold pretty well. Um, once I snap this thing back in place, there we go, and then close the door. Um, now that this is held in, this is pinched super tight. That thing's not really going to go anywhere. Flexes a little bit, but I think that's going to be my method. Going to do that on both sides, get all those rivets in. Again, I'll put the three down here, probably move that one up there. Just using plastic i'll see how it holds for now and get that mounted up and then i could start the wiring okay so here we are i got the driver's side all done it's going to show you what i did here i ended up re-drilling and not using that hole there or that one there they were awfully close to this seam here so when i snapped this thing on it would have hit it also made the head of the rivet kind of tucked behind there and really hard to use the plastic rivet gun so Decided to move them out a little bit, get them out here. Plus they clear the body a little more where that rolls over. So the back of the, um, the rivet where it bulges out, um, will have more room to clear and um, not rub on the body or push this plastic outward. Come back inside, you could see I was able to get all the factory screws back in place. Everything lined back up, no problem. Um, went with three up top and then just two down there. There were only two. I spread them out a little bit and moved them up. I think that's gonna be okay. And then this gasket here, that all just snaps back on, just like it was. Close the door. No problem there. 
you could even see, let's see if I can do that again. This angle isn't exactly right. This probably should be bent out a little bit more, but it is what it is. You get what you get. So let me close this door. You'll see it's going to kind of flex a little bit. It's not much, but being pinched in here and also down here, I think it's going to be absolutely fine. There is rubber between the door and the metal. Don't know if you could see that. It just looks like reflection, but um, you could see it down here where that, that rubber is it actually continues all the way up so it's not metal metal on metal here should be good this still got to get adjusted after I do the other side so I'll do the other side and show you what that looks like okay so I got this extra battery set up here on this ladder it's a little sketchy but it'll allow me to show you how this works here it's got three wires on it now normally spread these apart you have your red and black and power and ground. I don't know if you guys can see this from there. If I can get these to touch at the same time. Come on, it's tough with one hand. All right, let's see if we can do this. It's gonna work. All right, there we go. So we got red and black power. This thing is going. Power and ground, red and black. That's how that thing works. Now, what we need to do to get the yellow is to give the ground kind of sp spread this out a little bit I'm sure you're getting dizzy not my intent so now when we put red to power again but white to ground should get yellow is that working yeah okay so there you go. so what I'm doing is in that switch inside it has an up and down two position switch so basically you got the wiper in the middle switch one way switch is the other way Simple. So what I chose to do is use two relays. Now, when that switch moves one way, it's a double pull. So it's gonna pull um, basically two switches in one. And the upper switch is gonna be for my 12 volts and the lower switch of that single is gonna be for my ground. Now, since I have a power and a ground, you're gonna say, well, don't I need one? Yes, but by switching the 12 volts, I don't have 12 volts running through the light bar and it's not hot at all times. The relay, when it gets switched through that two wiper switch that I'm using, it will pull both the ground and the power to close these relays and it'll pass both power and ground. Now when you switch it the other way, the wipers flip the, to the other direction, it will still energize the power, but it will energize the opposite leg of the of the ground so the ground depending if the relay is switched one way or the other it's going to be either grounding the black or the white wire but without the switch being on it doesn't matter if that one is grounded because the 12 volts isn't on so I'm essentially switching 12 volts either direction is going to turn on and this relay either direction is going to be black or the white wire and that will give me both the white and the yellow light with that one switch while also being able to switch relay power on the 12 volts as well. Just gonna do a little proof of concept here to make sure this is gonna work. So when you flip the switch one way, we'll kick on the 12 volts, relay clicks, we got light. Now, when you do the other side, let me grab this wire, touch these two, relays click you here, and we got yellow. And then when this wire here on the right, going to the third relay, is disconnected, we got white. And then when you kick off the 12 volt relay, lights off, lights on, lights off, and then 12 volts to this one, ground, we get yellow. So should be good, just got to wire everything up actually the way it needs to be, put some heat shrink on this. Um, I like to use this adhesive lined heat shrink, I don't know if you could see, but works pretty well or just use adhesive line butt splices, which is what I'm gonna to do today. Button everything up and make sure it's working from the switch inside. Okay, just finished up with the wiring. For connection anyways you could see got the three relays hooked up here got 
bunch of the wires run to the back. These other ones, I gotta loom these all up, but they're connected for right now. And then the signal wires come over. They go in through that little grommet. If you could see it, I'm not really sure. But basically where I pointed out before. We'll go inside, show you what we did there. Okay, so inside, this is the existing switch here. This does these um, sort of floodlights. And now for, let me see if I can get a little more light here. Okay, so for the light bar, it's a double pole switch. And the right side is strictly for the ground. And the left side is for the power. So regardless if this switch is up or down, you'll always get the signal going from um, positive in either direction. That will kick the 12 volt relay to fire, send 12 volts to the bar. Now on this side, we only have one. That's because the relay is wired such that with the relay not fired, it will have ground pass through the 87A pin. And so when it gets power, with nothing here, the 87A pin is connected and we get white light. So you can see there, it's the white light. When I flip the switch the other way, it puts ground to this pin, which will move the ground off of the 87A on the relay and that will fire the yellow light. So there you have it, yellow, white, toggle switch, and then the spots. So here we are outside the shop. I got the regular headlights on, high beams, adds a little bit of light, back to the standard lights. That's with the spots turned on, spots back off. The light bar, the light bar with the spots, back to the spots, and then back to just normal headlights. And that is with the yellow bar.